Okay. Uh, my name is Maciej Lenski. I'll be presenting uh, preliminary results we have from uh, several burials coming from Virginia Circle uh, burials uh, from Central East Poland, but uh, uh, we'll try to also connect it to the broader idea about uh, Chichinets, especially Chichinets culture uh, burial customs. Mm. Okay, I'll start with the introduction of the Chichinets cultural uh, circle, because not everyone might be familiar with the phenomenon. Uh, but I will focus mostly on their burial customs because they are connected, connected direct, directly to uh, social structure of or proposed social structure of these uh, groups. Uh, then I'll present our, the preliminary results that are part of a larger project uh, for several uh, cultural burials. Uh, and in the end, I'll try to talk about whether we already can implement those results to the ideas we have so far about uh, the burial customs and social structural and behaviors of those groups. Okay, so Chichinets culture or Chichinets uh, cultural circle, uh, including uh, uh, several uh, entities, is a, a phenomenon that uh, occupied most of the central uh, Eastern uh, Poland and uh, Western Ukraine and Belarus in the uh, first half of second millennium BC. There are several ideas of the origin of the of this phenomenon, but uh, most of the researchers agree it originated from ethnoculture in the north central North Poland, where from where it spread to the uh, the much wider region, and it replaced uh, proceeding. Mierzanowice culture and Strzyżów culture. Uh, to some extent, those cultures might have also contributed to the origination of the Chinese culture, and we're not sure of the nature of the spread. Uh, those are the, uh, some ideas, uh, some problems that we hope to tackle uh, during this project. But today, I will focus mostly on uh, the burial customs of the culture and uh, social structure of, uh, and kinship structure of those groups. Uh, so. There is some variation in uh, this phenomenon of the burial customs, but there are several defining characteristics. And uh, uh, usually, majority of the individuals uh, belonging to those uh, cultures are buried in collective burials, uh, which are sometimes accompanied also by a single grave. Uh, most of those uh, collective burials are actually thought to be long use burial chambers, used for several generations uh, when uh, members of some kind of uh, social unit or uh, group were uh, added in a span of several generations. Um, those chambers usually uh, had uh, some wooden or uh, stone or mixed uh, supper structure. And uh, usually they were uh, abandoned or uh, closed with some kind of uh, ritual behaviors like closing the burial Mount, uh, b closing the burial ground with a mound, uh, or uh, in rare cases, uh, burning the, those uh, superstructure. Therefore, we have both inhumation and partial cremations, but for obvious reason, uh, we cannot use the cremated individual for our study. And what's interesting to us, there are some ideas uh, based on uh, both uh, morphological traits of the uh, individuals uh, found on those uh, burial chambers. Uh, but also uh, distribution of uh, grave goods and central position of uh, female skeleton or skeletons that are thought to be anthropologically female. That, uh, there were uh, several researchers proposed uh, actually matrimonial kinship of uh, structure of those groups or at least uh, importance of mat uh, matrimonial lineages in those groups. And that's uh, one of the questions we would like to try to answer with ancient DNA. So the, like I said, we are only <coughs> here uh, preliminary results for several burials, but the whole project that is led by Professor Makarovic from University, Adam Iskiewicz University in Poznań, uh, is uh, containing uh, more than 200 individuals belonging to uh, several cultures belonging to Chichinets uh, cultural circle. Uh, 
among those, majority of those individuals are buried either in double burials or uh, uh, in collective burials, uh, including from three up to even uh, 26 individuals. And today I'll be presenting three of those uh, features, uh, coming from two sites, uh, Brodzica and Zżerniki Górne. Uh, and uh, I will be presenting uh, one uh, collective burial from Brodzica and two from uh, Zżerniki. Uh, those burials were uh, containing uh, 4, 9, and 26 individuals, uh, respectively. So, the uh, first site I'll be uh, talking about is Brodzica. Uh, that's a single burial, uh, or single collective burial of four individuals that were uh, excavated during rescue excavations. Uh, so, uh, it's devoid of broader context. However, based on the, both the uh, typology and typology of burials, and uh, uh, more importantly about the, on the, the C14 date that we have from one of the individuals, it's attributed to Chichinia's uh, culture. Uh, and uh, the other site we're gonna uh, be talking about is Żeniki Górne. It's a uh, much older excavation uh, to a much greater extent. Żeniki was uh, a huge uh, burial ground of the, for the Chichinia's uh, culture, uh, culture uh, that contained multiple collective uh, burials. And additionally, there were some uh, stone enclosures co connected with those burials. And at some point of uh, the history of the use of the site, uh, part of it and uh, several uh, those of those multiple burials were uh, buried under a, a burial mound. Uh, I'll be talking about two of, the, uh, of those multiple burials, and it's going to be burial 62 that contained as, uh, that we were able to sample seven indiv individuals uh, from, uh, and building 69, which uh, on paper contained 26 individuals, however, we are able to sample 16 of them. Uh, we mostly targeted uh, right petrol, pe petrous temporal bones uh, in order to avoid double sampling the same individuals because, for example, Żarniki Górne is an old excavation and uh, the uh, bones belonging to those individuals are all mixed. And it's uh, oh, usually hard to distinguish and separate all the individuals that are uh, found in the documentation of the site. And then we used uh, well-established uh, protocols uh, ancient DNA uh, protocols uh, to extract DNA and build uh, genomic libraries uh, on the samples. And all of those steps are, were performed in uh, ancient DNA laboratory uh, at Faculty of Biology in uh, Univers Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań, which is a la laboratory dedicated sol solely to working with ancient DNA. Uh, additionally, for several of the samples, we uh, tried uh, different uh, targeted hybridization-based enrichment methods. Uh, we enrich uh, all of the individuals in mitochondrial DNA, and on several of the individuals we uh, tried using a uh, design bar as a panel of 15,000 uh, nuclear markers. That were, uh, the idea behind the panel was to maximize the overlap between uh, low coverage samples. Uh, the libraries, both uh, shotgun libraries and uh, enriched libraries, were uh, sequenced in uh, sequencing centers in Uppsala and Stockholm. And uh, the sequences were again uh, processed based on established protocols. Uh, we used three different based methods uh, to uh, detect contamination in the samples, and all the samples that failed, at least one of the methods, were excluded from the, from the analysis. Uh, for the kinship reconstruction, we uh, used recently published method by uh, Kuhn and collaborators uh, from Uppsala University. Uh, the, the method is supposed to be able to uh, estimate and reconstruct a first and second degree kinship uh, with a, as low as uh, 2,500 overlapping SNPs between individuals. And moreover, it uh, doesn't require reference other frequencies. So we don't have to use modern populations as other frequencies proxies, which might be an issue. Uh, the mitochondrial haplogroups were uh, the mitochondrial genomes were reconstructed using our in-house protocol, and the uh, mitochondrial haplogroups were determined using 
to uh, independent tools uh, which result are uh, cross-reference. And for the res result, for the Progita, we are able to uh, obtain usable data for free out of four sampled individuals. And already looking at the mitochondrial genome, we noticed uh, uh, the same mitochondrial haplotype in two individuals, which su suggested a uh, maternal kinship between, between those two individuals. And it was uh, in a way confirmed by this uh, kinship analysis, uh, which proved that there is actually a first degree kinship between two, two, two of the other individuals, so 554 and 555. Uh, there was some indication of the uh, also the uh, first degree kinship between the uh, individuals 553, but the amount of uh, overlapping SNPs was less than the threshold proposed by the authors of the method. Uh, however, uh, when taking into account uh, both the sex and the age of the, all those individuals and the microcontrol upper group, we believe that that's uh, the most reasonable explanation of the stru kinship structure for this uh, particular burial. So we basically have a nuclear family. Uh, we detected uh, a one parent, uh, which is the father, uh, with uh, two individuals being uh, uh, his uh, direct descendants. Uh, the second uh, burial, which is a uh, feature 62 from uh, Zerniki, uh, we were able to obtain uh, results, uh, usable results for five uh, out of seven sampled individuals. And uh, here again, we can see uh, the same mitochondrial haplotype uh, in two individuals that suggests uh, mitochondrial kinship between those two individuals. And uh, again, uh, those results were partially confirmed uh, by uh, kinship estimation when we are able to detect first degree kinship between two individuals. Uh, and those were the two sharing the mitochondrial haplotype. But also there are several additional second degree uh, kinship uh, found between uh, several sets of individuals. However, uh, based on this data alone, we cannot decide on one uh, correct interpretation of this uh, kinship structure. However, all uh, of the most probable explanations of that suggest <coughs> a, uh, at least three generation of, uh, uh, in this case, paternal kin, uh, paternal descendant uh, mm -hmm. in this group. Uh, however, we need uh, more uh, more data, both for the individuals we already sampled and those that uh, didn't produce enough data uh, so far to actually uh, fill the uh, missing gaps we have right now. The most interesting for us was the ob ob was the feature of 69, which uh, we were able to obtain uh, usable data for 12 of the 16 uh, sampled individuals. Uh, we were in, uh, we're, uh, we don't have still don't have uh, captured data for a majority of those individuals. However, due to the fact that several of them has uh, quite high coverage, uh, uh, genome coverage, we uh, uh, performed kinship analysis on those individuals anyways. And uh, one thing that struck us, uh, struck us in this uh, particular area is uh, the variability of mitochondrial lineages. We have at least uh, eight, uh, nine different uh, mitochondrial uh, haplotypes find, found on this uh, particular uh, burial. And again, we have some individuals with the same uh, with the same mitochondrial haplot haplotype, uh, which are here and here. And here again, uh, we were able to detect several uh, orders of kinship. Uh, first, we have first degree kinship between those two individuals, but again, uh, less than 2,500 SNPs were uh, overlapping between those individuals, so we're not certain about this particular uh, Position of those individual, this individual. However, both of them are uh, quite uh, we're quite certain about their relation to uh, uh, this particular individual. So that kind of confirms that this, this particular suspect uh, suspicion might be uh, right. So uh, in here we have uh, two generation. Uh, both uh, we see paternal descendants and maternal descendants are buried in the same uh, burial. So what can we say, uh, how we can interpret it or try to implement those uh, results for the ideas we have so far about the social structure of the and social behavior of those uh, population is that we definitely confirm that uh, those burials 
belongs to uh, uh, several generations of uh, some kind of kin groups. Uh, and uh, when looking also on the strontium isotope uh, data we have for those uh, uh, sites, we see low variability and uh, 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 yeah, low, va low va variability of strontium <coughs> isotope values, which points that the this actually might be uh, some kind of self-contained local population. However, that's just uh, uh, an uh, interpretation right now. And so far, the data does not support the, uh, the prevalence of either maternal or paternal lineages in those burials. However, what is noticeable is, uh, like I mentioned, those uh, multi multiple maternal lineages in uh, all of the uh, burials from Zerniki uh, Okay, that's... Thank you for your attention.